Hey guys, I know you're probably wondering why is she in the dark? Well, I was on my way to bed and God still want to do some more talking. Actually, I was on Facebook and I was just checking out some stuff. I was looking at Triple E's website and his Facebook page is a gospel rapper and I was just looking at the people's comments and seeing that God is doing some extraordinary things with young people. Not just with young people, just with people. He's doing some different things. He's taking them another direction, another path that's out of the ordinary. And it's like strange and it's hard for some people to grasp what he's doing. So I went into the word and he started showing me about a scripture. And the enemy's busy and he don't want me to make this video because I've just tried to make it and it stopped. So we're going to pray before we go into the word and we're going to pray over this YouTube. So, Lord God, right now, Lord God, I ask that you keep watch over this channel. I ask that you anoint this channel. I ask that you have your hand upon this channel. I ask that you have your hand upon me to preach and teach your word as you want me to do, Lord God. I can't do it without you. I need your blessing. I need you to say, I will do it through you. I need to know that you will do it through me. I have enough faith to know that you said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. Lord, we just glad that you are always with us. We are glad that you are always standing by. I just thank you that you keep giving me words to share, that these words are not my own. But they're yours. And my desire is to share your words in an extraordinary way because you are an extraordinary God. So, Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do. I don't want the people to see me. I want them to see you. I don't want them to see me, Lord God. So, Lord God, I just thank you for what you're going to do. I love you and I adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good night, Nicholas. Sorry, y'all. My son came in. And I'm in the dark. And I could have went in the bathroom. But I just want to just be comfortable tonight. I just want y'all to... This started as midnight devotions. I don't want y'all to see me. I just want y'all to see God speaking through me. Him talking through me. And this word that he was trying to give me. And I was like, oh my God. I want to share it. I don't want to taint it with my own stuff. I want you to share it with me. Why share it with your people? So the word is in Mark 8. So, like I said, this is the second time I didn't get to go all the way through it because YouTube messed up. So, And we're going to do it a little bit different. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you this time. I'm, we're going to break it down verse by verse. Mark chapter 8, starting with verse 1. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and said unto them. When you go into the word, of course you have to bless it. It's like food. You have to bless it first so it can nourish your bodies. When we add prayer of our food, your people say, Lord, bless this food so it will nourish our bodies. This food has to nourish our bodies too. But what, we've, what I've seen here is that in those days, so this is back in the day, the multitude being very great. So it was a great crowd of people because this chapter is called the 4,000 fed. And having nothing to eat. First off, that don't even match. How you going to have nothing to eat and Jesus is in the place? Jesus called his disciples unto him and saith unto them. Now, Jesus is there. And the great multitude is around him. We go into our word. 
God is there to teach us. <laughs> We're a crowd. Going to his word. God is there. Verse 2. I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. Jesus had compassion. Why did Jesus have compassion? Because they've been with him all the I have compassion on them. Because it's sad that they've been with me three days and they have nothing to eat. That means he's been preaching and teaching, doing miracles. No telling what he's done done in them three days. And nothing. Nothing happened. A lot of things happened in three days. He got up in three days. He was big. A lot of things should happen in three days. That showed me things happened in those three days. And out of everything that happened, we're still living the way that we want to. Out of all the time Jesus was beaten and hung on the cross, we still choose not to serve him. We still choose not to follow him. In those three days. In three days he's paid our rent. In three days he's delivered us from court. In three days he's delivered us from sickness. In three days he's delivered us from disease. In three days we said that we, on day one we said we take him in. And on day two we turned our back on him. Because he, he didn't do what we wanted him to do. In three days. I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. You just been there. We're the same way. We get into the word. We get into the Bible. And we there with him and have nothing to eat. We just get in there. We just know the scriptures. I can do all things through Christ which gives me strength. But don't know that. you just reading it. Because if we knew that scripture, when things come... I can do all things through Christ. I don't worry about it. I don't get worried. I don't double think it. I don't think, oh my God, what am I going to do? If the scripture says, and we've taken that in, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do these things through Christ. I can do this through Christ. But do we believe that or has it came cliche? Because a lot of the scriptures are now cliche scriptures that you just say them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Have you tasted him? Do you know in the scriptures, has he talked to you? Have you felt him? Or are you just going through the motions? Has he, what has he done for you to make you stay with him? What have you eaten from him? Verse 3. And if I send them away fast into their own house, stop. If I send them away, first off, they was fasting. That showed me that we can be fasting and still not be fed. We fasting from food, whatever, TV, Facebook, we fasting from so many things to get closer to God. And we still ain't got fed. We going through the motions of fasting. We going through, this is what you do. We want to tell people we fasting. We want to look, don't wear no makeup. We want everybody to know it. Pray for me while I'm fasting, girl, because you know I've been fasting. That's not what you do. You go off to yourself and people ain't supposed to know about that. That's between you and God. You're supposed to fast to get closer to him, not fast for a new car, a new house. That's cool, corporate fasting, all that. If that's what you want to do, but what are you getting out of the fasting? What has he told you while you've been fasting? While you've been praying, what has he told you in your prayers? While you've been reading his word, what has he told you in reading it? What has he left you with? What has he put in you? Because when you're fasting for something, he's getting you prepared for something else. You may have thought, I'm going to fast for this, that, or the other. But he's going to show you something in his word that what you didn't think you was going to do the fasting for in the first place. Then he says in verse 3, be part of it. They will faint 
by the way that could still be a they will faint by the way because he said that's still connected and if i send them away fast into their own houses they will faint by the way because after they get done fasting they done told me how many days they're gonna fast i'm gonna fast for three days ten days forty days twenty nine and too many not too many people are doing the forty days twenty days whatever it is that they do this fasting for and then I send them away to their own houses, meaning I, I'm a, they going to go back to what they was doing because they going back to their own houses because they're not staying with me in my house. So that's showing us right there. After we get through fasting, we go back to the stuff that we was doing. We go back to our prior activities, our things that we've been doing, or if we've got something out, we forget and just steady do what we're going to do, or we enjoy what we got out of it, whatever we was asking God for. We enjoy that and forget what he told us while we was fasting, forget the different things that he said to us while in fasting. Then he says, let's go back. He says, if I send them away fast to their own house, they will faint by the way. That means they're going to fall off. Just like I said that before, they're going to forget. And many people faint after the big blessing, they faint. They faint away from him. They forgot. After they faint, you know, you wake up, what happened? They don't, they, they what happening right now? They living a life of what happened. You was with, let me tell you what happened. You was with God. Then he blessed you. And then you went sideways. And start doing something else. That's what happened. After you fainted, so I'm going to tell you right where it happened. Because you probably waking up right now. And you may be looking at this video and be like, I don't even know where I, what happened. I'm going to tell you, I just told you what happened. God's telling Jesus telling you what happened to and tell predestined what's going he already knows what's what's gonna happen. For divers for them came far from far. They came from far away to be with Jesus. They came from many of us. We've come from far away. We've come from lives of sin. We've come from lives of rape being raped. We come from lives of being abused. We come from lives of being hurt, relationships. Um, miscarriages, baby deaths. We people have such stories that they come from to come to Jesus. And his disciples answered him, "From whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? We out in the wilderness. We out in the middle of nowhere. And you tell them us to feed these people with what? Ain't no trees around with no fruit on it. I ain't got no bread." We only got this little lunch bowl over here. We ain't got nothing. What are we going to feed them with? Really? Jesus is bringing the same test back around again because remember, he fed, asked them to feed the 5,000 first, and they gave the same answer. Here they are again in the 4,000. And they got the same answer again. We ain't got no bread, Jesus. Will you see something out here? Because we can't feed all these people. We can't feed all these folks. We think it ourselves, and people call us the day before, the day of. Can you come and preach? Oh, no, you didn't even give me no preparation time, Blair. I can't even do it. No. How much bread do you have? If somebody says, you know, comes up to us, can you pray with me? Oh, hold on, I got to get myself together first. I got to do this, or you caught me in the middle of something. Really? God has allowed that person to come to you. God has put you on their heart. They may have said it for the wrong reason what they think and they may have aimed it for bad but God means it for good and he put it on their heart for you for us and he asked them how many loaves have ye again basically saying how much faith do you have that you can you can't feed these 4000 really and I'm right here with you this time they didn't even he didn't even tell them this time go see how much you got he just asked him how much how much you got I got seven we got seven really you only got seven. He's telling that to us too. How much faith do you have? How much bread do you have on the inside? How many times have you went in the scriptures and you get the same thing every time? You only get Philippians 4.13. You only get the top of it. You only get Matthew 6.33. You only get the top of it. What are, you, what are you getting differently every time you go into these scriptures? There should be something that you get differently because we are at different levels every time God is putting different stuff in us. He's feeding us different stuff. What are we getting from it? Are we getting the same thing? I encourage you tonight when you get into the word, if you've already been in there, go back. See what God wants you to get off of it. Go into his word hungry and let him feed you. He's ready to feed. He's taking us to a higher level of feeding. Let him feed you. 